What happened? The contract show. She showed her, right? But I couldn't make a move on her without endangering the women. You want to put on an ABB on her? What's the point? She was bailed from head to foot. What were we going to do? We're running out of time. I'm going to get to Ballantyne, unless I've got something to deal with. Those women have had it. Yes, could I uh, uh, have the credit department, please? Hello, yes, uh, this is Dr. Leslie Weber, and I, I need to talk to someone about uh, my bill. Uh, the one that I received this morning is... No, 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 it's correct. It's just that I noticed uh, that it's overdue, but... Uh, you see, I've had a real problem with the bank recently. Um, there's been some kind of a mix-up over there, and, and um, a few of the accounts, they have managed to uh, mix the accounts up. And uh, from what they tell me, uh, of course, my money is there, but I can't get at it until they get this straightened out. So thanks to their bookkeeping, I, uh, I have no um, access to it at the moment. Um, yes, well, that's the only reason that the bill is still unpaid. And... Um, uh, I, d I don't know. I d it may have been a computer error. It may have been a human error. I just know that I'm the one that has to suffer for it. Uh, by the end of the month, if that would be all right for you. They tell me it'll take another week to ten days, they figure, to really get this thing straightened out. Oh, aren't you nice? And I am so sorry, but as you can tell, there's absolutely nothing I can do. Thank you so much. I surely will. Bye. Oh, what a mess. What is? Uh, oh, hi. Um, patients' records. All straight up? Yeah, I hope so. Good. Uh, have you uh, got a minute for me? For what? I'd like to talk to you. Well, uh, if it could wait, it would be better. I've got about a million things I should be doing right at this moment. I'll talk very fast, shall we? Okay. Are you all right? Is something wrong? I'm just going to ask you the same uh, question. What do you mean? Leslie, what is bothering you? <laughs> Nothing. I'm fine. Well, you almost took Amy's head off. That is not like you. I know. I know. It's just that sometimes, you know, I, I really do get so <clears throat> aggravated with her attitude. I just feel that it's beyond the time when she should have grown up and started to act like an adult. Don't you think you came down just a trifle too hard on her? No, I think sometimes it's the only way to get through to her. You know, you might have waited until this evening. The two of you could have sat down quietly at home instead of lighting into her here. Yeah, I, guess I suppose I could have done it in another place. And maybe my timing wasn't perfect, but I do think I was justified. Well, so do I. But the damage is already done, and it's not going to do any good to beat a dead horse. I agree. I'll back off. You might give her a second chance to. I already have. Oh. I took care of the bill. Well, how'd you do that? Did you pay for it on your account? I uh, covered it. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I think that's the best thing, don't you? Oh, I suppose. Well, anyway, I really better get back to work now, so I'll see you later. Yeah. Yes, please. Why don't I get you a fresh cup? Oh, don't bother. Just refill this one. It's really no problem. Well, why dirty an extra cup? It's only more work for someone. True, me. Oh, well, <laughs> in that case, I insist. <laughs> I wish all my customers were so considerate. Excuse me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what brings you to Port Charles? Are you, do you have friends here? Excuse me. Kelly's. I must have the wrong number. This isn't Myers Deli, is it? Not unless somebody switched the sign out front without telling me. Oh, I knew I missed something. Where are you anyway? I thought you were just going to go home and change and then come right back. I stopped off to see a client. We had more to talk about than I thought we would. How much longer are you going to be? Why, he's not there, is he? No, and I'm not about to face him alone. He won't bite. Well, you better with all that food you brought. <laughs> I'm on my way. I'll be here. Sorry uh, for the interruption. Sometimes it's impossible to sustain a conversation around here. You certainly have your hands full. Yeah, well, today especially. Oh, really? Why is that? Well, that was my boyfriend on the phone, and one of his relatives is coming into town, and I don't mind telling you I'm scared to death to meet him. Oh, you needn't worry. 
I can't imagine anyone who wouldn't be totally captivated by you. <laughs> you are really the sweetest man. I just hope he's as nice as you are. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, how's it going? Okay, I just came down to get a soda. You want me to get it for you? No, no, I can do it. Hey, did you, um, did you think about what I said? Nothing else. <laughs> Makes sense? No, oh, a lot. I don't know, it's just so hard. I know you're right, but... Well, I didn't mean to suggest that it would be easy. I don't know if I can do it. I mean, I care about Blackie so much. How can I treat him like just another guy? Lou, I got some time in between my classes. I figured we could talk about whatever you want to talk about now. Oh, uh, forget it. Why? No, it, it's okay, really. No, Lou, I want to Look, talk... if I'm going to be upstairs if uh, you need me, Rose. Okay, thanks. What do I do now? Come on, let's you and I find the corner and have a little chat. What do you say? Why don't we wait, Rose? Why? I think the person I should be uh, having a chat with is upstairs. I think you're right. I hope she agrees. Ooh, open the door. I'm not leaving until you open the door. Come on, Lou, please. I gotta go to class. To go? Who's keeping you here? You're keeping me here. I can't leave you like this. Wouldn't be the first time. Lou, come on. Open the door, all right? Open it. Look, I know we've got things to talk about. Maybe we can work them out now, okay? Okay, fine. That, that's fine. Uh, you can't say I didn't try. Goodbye, Lou. I need to still be there. Oh, yeah. Well, why'd you open the door, then? <sighs> All right, Lou, which bug in here? Nothing. Nothing? Come on, Lou. Look, it's not important. Well, not to you, anyway. All right, let me guess. Uh, I think you're mad at me because I haven't spent much time with you since that afternoon at Luke's. Much? Try none. I knew it. I mean, it really doesn't make a difference to me at all. I mean, if it was worrying you. Oh, yeah. It's just that I'm a little confused is all. I mean, I thought what we did was supposed to bring people closer together. It does. Blackie, I saw more of you when we were just friends. Well, what do you think we are now? Look, just drop it, okay? Um, you got what you want from me. You don't need me anymore. Don't say that, Lou, all right? You know how I feel. Do I? I mean, I know what I see, or in your case, I should say, who I don't see. But all I've seen is that you don't care about me anymore. But that's my problem and not yours, and I can't do anything about it. You can do something about it. Stop feeling sorry for yourself, okay? I don't know what you're doing here. You must really hate me. I don't hate you. You know how I feel about you. I care about oh, you. Oh, well, you have a funny way of showing it. I've told you a hundred times, I have a lot on my mind right now, okay? Can't you understand that? I am surprised you can even remember my name. Cut it out, Lou. My best friend Luke is gone. He's disappeared. And I'm very worried about him. It's just that I thought when people were in love that all they could think about was each other. I wouldn't know. I never said that I loved you. Now, love is something that it takes time. It's got, it's got to grow. And this, this bit about love at first sight, it's just a joke. Oh, no, not to me. Oh, not to you. Well, what about when we first met? I can see you really falling all over me. That was different. I was scared then. Well, I'm scared now, too, okay? My best friend is gone. I don't have no time to think about anything else. Like me. That's the way it is. I'm real sorry if I hurt you, Lou. Yeah, well, you're not the only one. But what can I do, Blackie? I still love you. And if it's only a matter of time until you love me, well, then I'm just going to have to wait because time is something I have plenty of. And you are the one thing that I cannot do without. What a great story. Did that really happen? Well, if it didn't, it should have. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Rose, I'm sorry it took so long. That's... Oh, Isaac. Oh, no. Hello, Jake. <laughs> Come on, Isaac. When did you get in? Well, more or less according to schedule. Sorry I kept you waiting. Oh, that's my good luck. This lovely young lady and I have had a delightful chat. 
Of course. You two know each other. Why didn't you tell me? I him? didn't know. Well, I don't understand. I, I had no idea this was your uncle. When you said he was an Orthodox Jew, I just, I, I had a totally different picture in mind. A nice little man with a beard and dragging along a prayer shawl. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Well, now what do you say? You're just like anybody else. Thank you, I think. Oh, th I'm making it worse. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> oh, nonsense. There was no way for you to know. I and mean, one doesn't have to be different to be religious. Now you tell me. Well, we live and learn. Well, something tells me I got a lot of living to do. I, I don't have to tell you. Your uncle here is a born storyteller. Oh, I'm not that good. It's just that she is a very receptive audience. Well, everything worked all right. <clears throat> so, uh, this must be your boyfriend. Hmm? Oh, I'd have done the introductions, but I guess they've already been done. Brilliantly as well. I'm so glad you two are getting along. Oh, I feel we're old friends. So do I. I... I am sorry, though, that I didn't recognize you. Oh, not at all. In fact, our encounter is that much nicer because you were befriending a stranger and not that dreaded relative of your boyfriend. <laughs> I object, I object, on the grounds that I don't now, nor have I ever considered you a dreaded relative. Uh, but you know that you made her just a little nervous about me, Jack. Now, I made myself nervous, to tell you the truth. Well, I'm happy that I didn't make it worse. Oh, you made it easier. Are you kidding? Coffee out of a star styrofoam cup, nothing to eat. You have the patience of a saint. I think I'll ignore that comparison. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be starving. Well, I won't deny well, it. Well, you just sit right there. We're ready for you now that we know who you are. And we've got all sorts of foods you like to eat. I'll just be a minute. Mm. That's it? It's a very short conversation. If we don't turn over the microfilm, Holly or Celia are going to die. Or so Madam X would like us to believe. I don't doubt that the woman meant what she said. Well, they may kill them then, regardless. You're saying you won't do it? I'm not at all sure that we can. Look, we don't have any choice. This is one case where the United States should just simply admit defeat. Let's cut our losses and get out of this before more innocent people are murdered. I wish it were that simple. It couldn't be simpler. Are you talking as an agent or as a husband? Look, in this case, it doesn't make any difference. Well, that answers my original question, then. What? We're not talking agent to agent, Robert. Not even agent to police commissioner. We're... You know, you are playing the husband. Everything else that you have learned has gone by the wayside. Look. All right, now listen. I'm trying to deal with reality. Well, please remember the stakes. Listen, don't... Don't patronize me, Ballantyne. I know what's involved, and I'm telling you, the situation is no longer salvageable. Now, let's, let's face reality, huh? You may know the reality, Robert, and I might even agree with you, but we don't have to let the DVX in on it. My friend, this is a poker game, and we have to hold our cards close to the vest. What they don't know can't hurt us. We don't have any cards. Well, they don't have to know that. Otherwise, it's the beginning of the end for everybody involved. All right, listen, good poker players also know when to fold. That's right. But they can also get back in the game, Robert. And this is the only game in town. And you're asking me to blow it. You don't have a choice. As I said, I just might agree with you. I'm beginning to think you do. Look, I would rather let them think that we're holding back for our own reasons. Now, besides, even if I decided to let you have the microfilm, it wouldn't help. Uh, uh, just leave that to me. Huh? No, 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 no. It's too late, Robert. The DVX doesn't know it, but we couldn't even meet their demands if we wanted to. Why not? Because by the time I got our half of the microfilm out of the safe, took it to the airport, flew up to Port Charles, delivered it to you, <laughs> it would be well into the afternoon. And even if I could camp, if I commandeered Air Force One, I couldn't make it up there in time. It's impossible. Damn. Yes, damn. They've got us, Robert. And we can only pray that they won't go through with this. That's not good enough. Well, I'm afraid it's going to have to be. Look, there's not a damn thing we can do to stop them. And I'm sorry. Talk to you later. About what? This thing between you, is it serious? 
Between Rose and I? Now, what else? Well, it depends on what you mean by serious. You lawyers. I thought only scholars were trained to confuse simple issues. I majored in vagueness. You never mentioned a girlfriend. I wanted it to be a surprise. You succeeded. You angry? Confused. I thought it would be better if you didn't have any preconceived notions about Rose. Why, did you imagine I would refuse to meet her because of something you might say? Oh, no, no, no. Why should you? Well, I thought perhaps you could tell me. Look, you may knock my motives, but you can't knock the result. I mean, you saw Rose, you didn't know anything about her. It was cold. You liked her, didn't you? Very much. Yeah, I knew it. I could see it the minute I walked in. She's special, isn't she? She's a lovely young lady. Very, very charming. I think so. Um, has she ever been married? Why? Well, her last name, uh, Kelly, isn't it? As in this diner. A souvenir from a former marriage? Would it matter if it was? Perhaps she had it changed. Rose? Hardly. So we can assume then that uh, she's Irish? Very. I see. I don't. I suspect you do. Uncle Isaac, I know what you're driving at. Good. Then you can save me the embarrassment of belaboring the obvious. Which is? You know as well as I do, Jake. What does it matter what Rose is? As long as she's wonderful, isn't that the most important thing? The most, yes. But not the only. Spell it out for me, Uncle. Rose is a fine young woman. But she's not for you. Here we go. Guaranteed kosher food. What is and if you don't believe me, ask my expert. Oh. I, I would tell you, but I, to, to tell you the truth, I can't pronounce any of it. Well, how <laughs> wonderful. Thank well, dig you. in, dig in. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Commissioner Scorpio? That's right, you are. An emissary from my country. Gulistan. Yes. My dear for you. I have a letter for you from President Tapa. Will you sign here, please? Thank you. Thank you. It's me. Listen, I haven't got time to talk. Meet me outside of the Gulistani Pavilion. I have the letter from our pal. Yeah, fine. Saturday, the heat comes down in Chinatown, and Hooker gets help from a girl who may be his daughter on T.J. Hooker. Then Gopher's a prisoner of love held hostage by a seductive woman captain on the love boat. After a husband and wife switch bodies to save a marriage, and a lady of the night seeks true love on Fantasy Island. Raven and Alicia compete for Sky's heart. Watch The Edge of Night next. Now stay tuned for FYI with Hal Linden and learn how you can get the latest medical advice free 